wonderful. Hello, Facebook land and MD who's watching the recording. Welcome to um, Claire's second Facebook live. <laughs> Still as scary as the first time. Nah, I don't believe you. Don't believe you in the slightest. Um, and this one was all Claire's idea, so I'm going to let her introduce it to you. <clears throat> um, so my idea behind this Facebook behind this Facebook Live was to talk about all things puppy really um, so to answer any questions that you might have so for people that are already attending our puppy class if something hasn't come up yet in class that's been answered by a trainer or if you've covered things in class but it might not be working for you or you need a different solution then hopefully we can answer um, your question here um, we've got a question that we've already been sent in that we're going to be covering shortly but just a chance for us to kind of have a chat about all things puppy if you don't have a puppy or you're thinking about getting a puppy again a good opportunity to ask us questions here um, we have quite a lot of experience between us of puppies um teaching puppy classes um for quite a long 10 years something like yeah, that yeah. i think it's nine nine years teaching puppy classes for me and i've had ooh, probably about 10 puppies that have lived with me so various foster puppies puppies i've say, kept puppies just, i've trained for other people just to clarify they, they've not all <laughs> stayed with her because wow yeah 10 yeah. puppies that's that like crazy. 101 dalmatians level yeah, madness nah. right there okay well how about we start with things to look out for when you're thinking about getting a puppy mm, because that's a, a a sensible place to start for everyone yeah. i guess isn't it yeah. what what to think about in terms of the right breed for you then you've got to mm -hmm. think about well where do i get that puppy from so thinking about the breeder um so let's where shall we start should we start thinking well, about let's start with using us as an example okay so we're both mulling over the idea of possible puppies in our future um, we've both experienced dogs that have come through rescue or might have come from breeders and things like that. And actually it's quite hard to say exactly what's the right way to do it or the right way to go down. Um, so we have quite specific shopping list mm. requirements for a dog that would fit well in yeah. our houses. So tell me what your puppy would need to be happy and delighted about Claire or able to tolerate. Um lots of things um, top three needs to be okay with other animals so that includes dogs and mm -hmm. cats and goats and sheep and hens <laughs> um so i need um my puppy uh eventually my, my dog has got to be okay um around all those things because my animals they they don't all interact together but they get uh, they kind of get along and they they bimble about together so that's, that's and there's one every me. chance of a chicken wandering into the kitchen oh that has yeah and my office now as yeah, well and so, your office. so getting on with the other animals in my home is one um i also need them to i need a dog that can come to work with me Mm -hmm. So I need a dog that's happy being out and about in the world, settling in the car if I need it to, coming into busy places if I need it to, and working with working with clients. So a lot of the behaviour stuff that we yeah. do, um, I need what we call a stooge dog for. So being comfortable and happy um, with that as well. Um, and a dog that will be happy participating in any activities that I decide to do. So um, my dog <laughs> You don't want a yeah, potato really, no, do you? Not so no, not much. Um, so things like agility if I want to go back into that or gun dog stuff or any of yeah. the stuff that I currently do, hoopers. I want a dog that will, you know, happily do that, that with me. And I think the important thing is there that Claire, and we are completely in, you know, like magic la la fairy dust mm. land right now, but Claire is looking for a dog who by her own admission, it's comfortable and relaxed and chilled in most situations. We'll settle and do nothing when asked. We'll be sociable and appropriate with people and dogs, but we'll also be keen to work with her in chosen activities or sports to be able to switch on and switch off. And I'm going to say now, that is a big order mm -hmm. for any dog. It doesn't mean it's not possible. It just means we're actually quite picky about the dogs that we bring into our family. And I'd quite like everything that Claire has, but... I don't live in a small holding, yeah, so essentially. Yes, you don't need to be happy with all the animals. <laughs> so, you know, being able to walk or run past animals and ignore them is actually good enough for me. Mm -hmm. Claire needs them to be okay when they walk into her house, okay? So there are some breeds that might be better or more challenging in those scenarios, depending what we wanted to do. If you're watching us right now and you don't already have your puppy or 
you're a little bit puppy broody or you're thinking about the next dog now that might be a couple of years off i was gonna yet, say like, I, I am actually planning yeah, for like in two years yeah, time. that's what we're researching for two okay couple of years, so. I, I didn't know if we were in the same oh, yeah. puppies together how exciting that could be terrifying yeah. um but we're thinking you know a year or two in future so even if you're just considering vaguely getting a puppy start writing your shopping mm. list start writing out what they need to be okay with because sure we can train a lot of it mm. but it's so much easier when the dog arrives with some of those characteristics and do you think breed matters i think that? breed matters in the sense of it's more like type so i know we sometimes talk about like herding versus gun dog yeah. types um you know that kind of thing mm -hmm. if, if you don't want a dog that barks then there mm. are some breeds that it's just like well then don't get them yeah. you know don't, don't don't pick a schnauzer Mm. if you don't want commentary on most things yeah or a beagle for yeah. that matter <laughs> and i guess just thinking about kind of my home and all those animals and i have a herding breed i have a border collie so then my job with that border collie from day one is to teach it what i do and don't want with the animals yeah. like it's not okay to kind of to leg it off from the house and go running down the end of the garden and start herding the goats and i not know where you are especially yeah. when you're a deaf puppy um so Absolutely. i need to make sure from day one and putting that control in there because yeah. i've got a border collie it's gonna want to herd <laughs> i need to make sure that yeah. it's my responsibility too. so i guess what we're saying is just because somebody says a breed might do x or y and you go oh that could be a problem i mean i do a lot of running and hill walking and i have collies and now i have a pointer and they're both pretty interested in wildlife it doesn't mean i shouldn't have them it's like claire says it just means i'm like okay manage those mm -hmm. first experiences let's not ever let my collies think that chasing sheep is a smart thing to do um, you know, whether they're bringing them back to me or not, the farmer is unlikely to be appreciating that. So it, it's really thinking about what you're doing before you get in there. And honestly, you need to think about this before you go and see them because they are super cute. The smell oh, of baby puppies. And they puppies. will just, in, they'll just oh, embed on just, your hands and you can't They will. And you'll bond mm -hmm. and you'll be like, yeah. but I can't not. Mm -hmm. Or you might go and see a puppy and go, actually, you're not in a very good situation and be like, I need to rescue that puppy. Well, mm. I'm going to be honest here. If you've got the expertise and the time, and maybe you don't have a job at all, then sure, you can mm -hmm. probably be that rescuer that saves the puppy. For everyone else, you're kind of condemning your family and the rest of your animals to that rescue mission. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they might not be so willing yeah, so it has to, to sign be the up right for decision. That. Which brings us nicely on to um, one of the questions that comes up in class is how to help my puppy get on with my older dogs mm -hmm. or vice versa. Um, I think we've both had cases recently where mm. there's been some tension between puppies and older dogs. Yeah. Um, so what would you say is the best way to introduce, because we've got the perfect world, we've okay. done the research, we've yep. picked the puppy. We're we've bringing, got, so we've got existing dogs and then we're yeah. bringing this new... How would we want to in? introduce the new baby puppy to the Slowly and dog. carefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and a lot of it depends on your existing dogs, and I guess your how your existing dogs are going to cope with that. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes it can go perfectly well from day one, and you might have an existing dog that goes, puppies, puppies are amazing, I love puppies. And you might have to do little bits of management here and there, making sure older dog can have um, space and get away from puppy, but they might hit it off from day one and have a beautiful relationship. They're not the ones that people ring us about, though, are they, more? No. No, no the ones not. that we usually get are where there's an existing dog that um, is either a bit unsure of the puppy, um, then they're not tolerant of the puppy, they might be starting to show some signs of aggression, they might be growling at the puppy. Um, so our first part of call is we need management in place. We need we need to be thinking about barriers. We need to be thinking about places that older dog can, can safely get away from puppy. Um, to start with, sometimes it might be enough that older dog can jump on sofa because puppy can't reach them. Well, that's only going to last long. It's going to last so long. Yeah. Um, my safety net I use a lot when I have puppies is a house line. Mm -hmm. um, I think that comes from having Scout, who was um, my deaf dog, where I, I couldn't kind of interrupt verbally. Go, I, I, I don't think that's always, a good yeah, idea. Yeah, Cat always getting his oh, eye line so often. Just having a light trailing line that I can just either prevent him going over and diving on Spencer, <laughs> giant scaredy German Shepherd, or, or just guide him away gently. Um, 
I also found it useful that I had puppies that coped being in crates as well and yeah. would settle on their own so I could um, make sure I could manage the space between dogs easier. Um, baby gates, they're a lifesaver. Aren't they just? Um, aren't they just? Yeah. And if you notice, the one thing that we're not saying is we leave them to it or we let them figure it out themselves or we hope it will get better as they get older. Um, sometimes that is true, but I've got to say not very often. And if something does go wrong in those first critical few weeks, mm. if your puppy has an experience that starts them thinking that other dogs are scary or not safe or unpredictable, then you're potentially actually damaging your puppy's perspective on life. But also you run the risk of souring the relationship between the two dogs basically for the rest of time. Mm. And sometimes the hard truth is that actually the puppy is being beautifully appropriate. It's being sensitive. But the, old, the old existing the older, dog just says, I don't want to. Yeah, you know, so, sometimes yeah. the older dog doesn't want a puppy and you have to sit back and go, Okay, it, so if I use Bronte as an example, in fact, Farah, my little deaf mm. border collie, who at one point said, okay, no more new dogs, mum, because she was like, no, you're not fostering anymore. She was just like, I'm not accepting any of them. If I had asked her, what do you think if we had like, you know, I don't know, a mm. crazy little working cocker spaniel Farah, her answer would have been A, impolite, and I can't say it here, and B, she would have packed her bags and left. So sure, I could manage the heck out of that situation, but I think but it wouldn't have been the right. Decision all I would have her. gotten was two dogs that vaguely tolerated mm. each other and a puppy that went, mm. "Why doesn't my auntie Farah like me?" Yeah. And Farah going, mm, "Puppy." So it's not always right to bring a puppy in, but you can maximise the chances of it going well if you've done things like you know scent exchange early on, and then when they arrive, you manage it like crazy with house lines, baby gates, crates, barriers, the lot. Mm -hmm. If you aren't sure about how your dog is going to react to a puppy, maybe just watch how they are with young dogs out on walks. See how they are with your friends' puppies. Get a sense of it. Mm. Because then if they it's don't... not going to come as such a surprise yeah. when you bring the puppy home and the existing dog goes, what the hell is that? And <laughs> packs their bags and heads And, and, and tries to leave. Yeah. Um, Andy, who's watching, I can see the numbers going up, which is always fun. This is where Claire's now going to panic. Um, if you have specific questions about anything to do with puppies at all, just stick them in the chat box. It should pop up and we should see it okay. Um, so, so far we've covered all the thinking and the years of planning before you even get a puppy. Yeah. Bringing them in if you have existing animals so that we're integrating that carefully. And that goes the same if you have cats or yeah. small furries. Or if you're bringing a rescue dog in, a lot of the rules are the, are the same again. Absolutely. So it's not, it doesn't just all apply to puppies, but that's Absolutely. just what we're focusing on for today. Um, and just to make it clear, when we talk about puppies, for us, we mean kind of 12 to 14 mm. weeks and younger. And that's really, we want them to be coming home to you between 8 to 10 weeks, ideally. But they might be coming from a rescue centre or they might be coming from a breeder. So most of this applies regardless. It's not really about where your puppy came from because there are some great rescue centers and there are some terrible breeders and vice and versa. Yeah. You know, no, yeah. nothing really kind of guarantees that. But once you've got your puppy home, what's the most common thing that you think we get asked when people, when in their first puppy class? Is what's it the... normal for my puppy's mouth to be attached to my hand or my feet or my shoes or my trousers? Oh, it never time. stops. Please help me. <laughs> and then when they get into class and we do the question and answer session and, and we ask the question, Did it, does anybody's puppy not bite? And nobody puts their hands up like, oh, it's normal. It doesn't make it any easier necessarily, but they can. it helps them to understand that it, Absolutely. it's normal. But my say mouthing is kind of up there Absolutely. where we get a lot of questions and that's where people need a lot of help. So it's one of the main And ones. it can be kind of scary if you've not either had a puppy before or if this is your first time having a puppy of a mouthier breed, mm. say. It can be, well, it wasn't like this last time. Um, because the thing is, the puppies are going to explore with their mouths, quite literally. They're going to put it around and taste it and feel the texture and then go, oh my god, you made an exciting noise. And squeaked. Yep, so maybe we do that again. Terriers love it. Don't they just? <laughs> um, and our kind of advice around mouthing is is rarely to make a high-pitched noise because we just find it it, it excites, excites too much. Yeah. And sometimes it can be scary for them yeah. as well. Yeah, so you so. might scare the puppy, which mm. is generally not good. But more importantly, they might think you're a squeaky toy. Mm. And then you've just doomed yourself to being bitten when your puppy is bored or curious. And that's not a good mm. thing either. 
I think we'd probably also distinguish between mouthy, exploring, rolling my teeth and my mouth over you versus getting my back teeth and really biting down. Mm -hmm. And re because that, that hurts. That hurts a lot. Um, that can actually, you know, really puncture the skin. I mean, puppies have sharp teeth but so it, that they learn to be yeah, careful. So it, shouldn't, it, it should hurt, but it, it shouldn't cause much damage. Yeah, you shouldn't be having, you know, deep seeping mm. puncture wounds and you shouldn't get the feeling that your puppy is actually, like, deliberately trying to chomp hurt, down with yeah. the back teeth. If you're getting that, to be honest, come speak to us. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the quickest way of dealing with it. But everything else is just about, oh, well, I'd rather my puppy doesn't chew the doorstop. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to move the doorstop out of the way. I'm going to give them something they should have. Yeah. Repeatedly. Yes. And if I keep leaving the doorstop there, then, then that's to be honest, my that's, yeah, it's my own fault. Yeah. Really. I clearly so we move the doorstop, we move the tea towels, we move the cushions, we might move the shoes, we might move the glasses. Yeah. We might have to just reorganize for a short time. It doesn't have to be forever. Um, but some of the last dog that came to me is a flat coated retriever who likes to put everything in her mouth. So moving things, keeping things out of her way, having them in different rooms for a short time just meant she wasn't rehearsing and practicing the things that yeah. I didn't want her to do. And then gradually we introduce mm -hmm. those things back into her life. We help her to understand what is good to pick up and not yeah. when she has enough brain to learn it. Mm -hmm. And we also let her bring us things because that's quite so good she too. She loves it. She was a retriever. Absolutely. She was born to retrieve. Yeah. So. And here's the thing. If you do that when they're little, it means you can then live a life with stuff around windy whereas i share my house with a large german wire-haired pointer who i don't think learned that when he was little so he likes picking things up but then he thinks it's an amazing game because apparently he didn't get to pick everything up that much yeah. so then he runs around and parades and then maybe he swallows it or maybe he gives it back to you so do you think it's important that we don't rely on management forever correct because then the, w there's no learning happening so when yeah. you reintroduce the stuff it's just like an amazing party i'm gonna grab everything and run around so with it. it's not keep everything away from mm -hmm. your puppy hit the magic age reintroduce it and they'll be fine you're still gonna have to do some work there um otherwise you end up with a dog that is perfectly well behaved in an empty barren room or in a crate like laird was <laughs> yes and, yeah. and you know we can now go to holiday cottages yeah we haven't had to clear all the cushions out from every room for a few months Hopefully that will continue to be the case. So management is important, mm -hmm. but then you need to think about what you're going to do next. Yeah. I would say the other big question I get is probably around it's two things together. It's my puppy crying at mm -hmm. night and my puppy toileting at night. Yeah. So what do you do when you have a foster or a newbie puppy generally? Um, because I like my own bed and I like my sleep, the puppy is in a crate um, in my room next to my bed to start with. Um, in most cases, they've just left their litter. Um, they've left their mum, they've left their litter mates, they've left all that company. And it's a lot to expect them then to just settle and be on their own um, in a different room away from me. And some, some puppies, they, they do that from day one and they're fine with it. But it's a risk if you if you're gonna yeah. put them down um, downstairs away from everyone. So I tend to have them with me. If they scream and they're distressed, you're gonna have to go down to them. Mm -hmm. um, it's not fair not to. And then you know, in your heart of hearts, you are running the risk of creating that as a pattern. Yeah. So if they're up with you, then actually it's easier. It helps them. It helps them settle. I think for the first two nights that Summer was in with me, she was in a crate, and I just sat until she went to sleep, and then I got into bed, and and she, you know, now she hasn't now i have a dog that if i accidentally lock them in a different room makes no noise whatsoever and i'm panicking <laughs> running around trying to find it yeah she's she such a good I'm job good. yeah she's fine so you know but i'd rather it be that way than anything else but that tends to be where i start them and then once they are sleeping through the, the night once they've got a good toileting routine um that crate then moves out of room they don't sleep in my room forever apart from poppy who sleeps on the bed um, <laughs> um but some really summer sleeps it. down uh, downstairs now okay. um, so if, no, if summer woke problem. you up in the night and you thought i think she might need a wee you'd take her down you'd let her out take her down let her out not make okay. a big deal of it we're going out to the toilet it's not playtime we're not going you know because i'm half asleep anyway i yeah don't <laughs> i don't interact much when i in the middle of the night so and then it's back back to crate back to bed until the puppy can hold um, themselves okay. through the night and that normally depending on the breed and how large their stomach is shouldn't take too long yeah and so the thing is we're again we're not we're not leaving our puppies to scream it out. We're also not waiting till they're shouting and screaming because they really need the toilet. 
we're also not giving them a pad so they carry on going in the house. We'd rather have slightly broken sleep for those first mm -hmm. few nights, maybe a week, yeah. to get them into the routine. I think routine. three weeks we pretty much quack toilet training. And I wouldn't say that a puppy at 11, 12 weeks old was, was perfectly toilet trained, but she was, she had a really good start and was doing kind yeah. of 90% outside. So, yeah. yeah. And the rest of the time was me not paying attention. Yeah, which is, you know, always a risk, but it's a lot easier when they're right there. Mm. Um, we have a question which I'm going to answer or we're going to answer before we move on, which is from Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. So we were talking just a wee second ago about managing our puppies, mouthing us and chewing stuff. Mm -hmm. And Lisa said that she's heard that some people suggest using things like pet corrector sprays to stop puppies doing things you don't want them to do. Mm. And a pet corrector spray for anybody who doesn't know is basically a little canister of compressed air. So it makes a really loud hissing noise. When you press scares it. me and I'm pressing it yeah yeah it's, it's not a pleasant noise I have to admit no. um and in general we our, our approach is we don't want to risk scaring the wits out of your puppy <laughs> so anything that could backfire mm. is way down the list of options especially if it involves hands because I guess my aim with puppy is to learn that hands are good um, because I want dogs that are happy being handled. If I need to do anything with my dog with hands, I want them to know that these things are always going to bring something good. So if I'm pairing hands being around them with something scary, then I'm, the risk is that my yeah. puppy learns that these are not good things. These are things to keep away from. So later, if I need to grab my puppy, if they're about to escape, or if I need, <laughs> that might happen, or yeah. if I need to just yeah. um, examine my puppy or pull something out of their fur that's got stuck, I want a puppy that's trust my hands going and doesn't them. think bad yeah. stuff's going to happen when your hands mm -hmm. are near them and um, i think also the challenge is that puppies do need to do some of that stuff so sometimes they might be toileting indoors because they have a urine infection because they just can't hold it yet because you miss the signs and in none of those cases would you want to punish your puppy because you're going to feel like mm -hmm. it you're going to feel really guilty and the the i guess what might happen is that the puppy doesn't learn that toileting inside is bad, but that just toileting in front of you is bad. So then you end up with the puppy that sneaks into a different room or behind the sofa. So there is a fallout of using. Kind yeah. Of those and we can never techniques. predict that. Yeah, we don't know. Um, so generally, instead of thinking about that, our approach is manage the situation. So take the stuff out of the way and then make sure you help the puppy understand, well, this is for you to chew. Mm -hmm. Not the sofa. This is for you to choose, sweetheart. Oh, look, there's a house line and suddenly you can't get to the sofa. What Beautiful. a terrible shame. Turns out chewing your own bone on your own bed was a much better choice. Um, so thank you for the question, Lisa. I'm going to ask Claire one more question and then we are going to go to Sophie's big long question because mm -hmm. it's a good one. If you had to pick one thing to teach your puppy, only one thing what would it be and I haven't given her these questions in advance so um it's kind of unfair <laughs> for me in my house with my existing animals and the way that my garden is set up for me I would say to check in with me regularly um that's folk kind of that checking in and, and paying paying attention and knowing where I am quite a lot of the time because yep. um, I have a really large garden and it is not secure it's not entirely uh, no, secure, secure. <laughs> um so and I want my dogs to have the freedom of being out there and the freedom of, of being off lead um because I've got some beautiful walks around me so I want them to be, enjoy being off lead a lot of the time so for me Oh God, it's hard to choose but that would be one of the priorities it's your starting we, point yeah right? yeah um focus and attention so we'd want we want puppies to mm. want to choose to seek us yeah. out to want to give us their attention rather than it being us that's nagging mm -hmm. them and i would absolutely agree with that just wanting to hang out with me yeah just want to be around me yeah. because after that everything will flow yeah the one thing that i would add in which is not in any way a disagreement but it's based on my personal experience is i would want to build my puppy's confidence and resilience I want to see them bounce back mm. from scary or surprising yeah. things. It's nice if they look to me for support, yeah. but actually I care more that they go, oh, that was weird. I'm going to wimble over and investigate it. Mm. But, and I think that's because yeah. I spend so much time working with dogs who are nervous or scared or yeah. fearful. 
uh, that lack that resili yeah. yeah resilience and it's because we can't we can't keep our puppies in a bubble and protect them from everything forever but what we can do is we can help them learn to to have that yeah. resilience and to bounce back um if something scary happens or to look to you or, or whatever it, whatever it's going to be but yeah i'd say definitely confidence yeah. um building with puppy is, so, is important one of the screens just went weird so i'm just gonna have to try and move the question over. oh no see there was a technical hitch it will all be fine don't worry there we go it'll come back mostly because there's a loose connection on one of the cables i think because of all the dogs that like underneath maybe the it's screen. the technology telling us we shouldn't do facebook lives You've got three minutes to answer the question. We should totally do <laughs> Let's Facebook do it. Live. So this is a question from Sophie. Sophie says, I was wondering if you had any tips for me in terms of refocus. Uh, she has a six month old working cocker spaniel. Oh my God, the challenge. Um, she's ace, but can lose focus very quickly and it's difficult to get her back. For example, practicing loose lead walking, doing really well, and then a bird flies overhead in the sky, at which point highest value food has no value. And I quote, even my craziest crazy woman performance has no effect, but it does worry the general public. I feel your pain. Um, so Sophie is working on trying to build up her puppy's interest in playing retrieve and other games. So they become more rewarding than birds that she can never catch anyway, but wondered if there's anything else she could or should be doing to help get that refocus when I've been distracted. Adolescents are hard, aren't they? Yeah, they are. <laughs> and we read this and went, that's a teenage uh, puppy right there. <laughs> um, so well done to Sophie for um, training her puppy. I think Sophie's come to our puppy classes. Mm -hmm. So um, she's been training her puppy since she was, I think, probably about eight weeks old. So well done um, to Sophie for continuing. And um, so in terms of kind of trying to um so I'm just gonna read it just in case. so we'll play so she's playing games i presume playing games at home where there aren't distractions to start with um but if you aren't that's your first job yeah. tip um so i would be making sure you're playing these games in places where you're not likely to have birds flying overhead to start with until she really loves the game you've mentioned retrieve games um which are fantastic i would also want to check that you're also seeing if there's other games you might like 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 tug games um because they can be probably i would say to start with even more fun than retrieve yeah. sometimes even for a cocker spaniel that does like to bring things and back. they're easier as mm. well if only because you're usually still attached to one end of the toy yeah which makes it feel like less likely that you're about to lose your puppy yeah um I think the other thing I noticed in this is a, a general thing, which is like, if one thing isn't working, we tend to want to switch to a different mm. kind of reward. So saying you know, the highest value food doesn't work. And I, I don't think it's necessarily what Sophie's doing, but it kind of reads a little bit like, oh, so therefore I'm also working on toy games. And I'm like, well, but the thing is, there's no guarantee the toy is gonna be yeah. better than the food would have been. The problem is not the, the environment. Reward. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the, the level of distraction. Yeah. So if your puppy walks in a beautiful loose leading class, but can't do it the minute they walk out the door mm -hmm. and they're walking back to the car, then the solution is not to try 17 different kinds of smoked ham. The solution is to go, oh, my puppy really struggles when there's grass under their paws. Yes. Yeah, so where, so maybe we don't for just now try training there just yet, but we might try and change the environment slightly. So if, if the smelly grass is too exciting, well, if I, start working for example on concrete or um, yep. tarmac or something like that where it's going to be less smelly um in their places where there's going to be less birds that i can start yeah. so do i drive to a car park <laughs> we have done this <laughs> we have. um where there aren't likely to be any other birds or any really big distractions and is that where i do my practice for just now so i guess to a less distracting environment until my dog can do it reliably there yeah. might be the best place to start and the other thing when someone says that they have an adolescent puppy and that they're practicing something like loose lead walking and it's going really well, there's a bit of me that would say, amazing, send me a video. I want to see what going really well looks like for you because it might not be what I was thinking. It mm -hmm. might be that actually your puppy is barely holding on with a thread of attention mm -hmm. so it doesn't take much to distract them away. Yeah. 
And if it's something that happens right when you go out of class, the bonus is you probably have a small enough puppy you can pick them up and carry them right now. And that's okay yeah. for or, the first couple of weeks. Or if you um, have, depending on how you have your puppy attached to the lead, or in class we teach you to have um, a lead configuration that means you have a management tool. So it might be unclipped from the collar or the front of the harness and just have them attached to the back. And that's okay for the short term. If you need to get from A to B, your puppy isn't going to do that nice walking because a bird flew Same. past 10 minutes ago <laughs> once. Um, then we, we might just kind of say to the puppy, okay, let's just go. If you can't pick your puppy up because they're not all tiny. No, they're not. But, you know, if they're little enough, you should totally yeah. take that as an advantage. Yeah. But here's the thing. Having that management, being able to put them on that back clip does not get you out of doing the training. No. So... If you were to come back and say, but the harness isn't helping, it's not stopping the pulling, then that's where the training comes yeah, in. Yeah, that's our bit. That's where the mm. training part comes in. And it's up to you at that point to decide what really matters. So actually, I have a bad back, um, have had since I was like nine years old, um, pulling on the lead and pulling strongly is just not an option. It's insufferable. Mm. It's I not for dogs. I need them all to walk nicely from yeah, the walk. Absolutely. Um, if it's some if you have a tiny little dog, you might not care yeah. so much. Fine. There's probably something you do care about, though. Maybe like not shouting at people or giving stuff back or coming back out of the rabbit hole. So you pick that one priority and just concentrate on, on it. So ours were building resilience and a puppy that wants to check in with us. That means genuinely, I'm going to speak for Claire as well and hopefully not be wrong. I think we care a lot less if a puppy can sit or lie down or do nice tricks. <laughs> If it's a confident bouncy puppy that can choose to check in with you and wants to hang around you oh that is a gift mm -hmm. that is a serious gift we can train the other stuff later yeah and um, it's more about getting those good experiences and building the personality that you want to spend the rest of your life with let's face it and i would also add on to that manage the rest of the stuff so bad habits don't form yeah it's, you it's easier for thing if you don't let things become bad habits than trying to fix the bad habits later. So yes, you want to build the resilience and those other things, but also you need to have clear management strategies for making sure bad habits don't form in other areas. So yeah. if you're concentrating on kind of your resilience and you're letting your puppy off at the park and they're running, everyone <laughs> greeting everyone because we need to socialise them. Well, that's but you kind of put recall on the back burner. I would say kind of rethink and look at your management there because that's yeah. going to become a problem later yeah. on. Yeah, kind of balancing yeah. things up yeah. at that point. Okay, if there are any other questions about anything to do with puppies, go ahead and stick them into the chat box. We'll give that a wee second to update and then we'll start to wrap up, much mm -hmm. to Claire's relief. See, it gets easier, doesn't it? No, apparently not. Um, and if you've just joined and you've missed the rest of it, don't worry. Facebook's very clever this way and it records it. So we will put up a link to the recording. Yep. Yay. And we'll, um, we'll be available send it in out perpetuity. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. I am not seeing any more questions. So I'm going to say I think we are good. Thank you very Thank much you. to everybody who is live or watched the recording. We really appreciate it. If you want to know more about our puppy classes, go to wellconnectedcanine.co.uk. We train at the Yorkshire Museum of Farming at the moment. Yep, on a Monday evening. On a Monday evening. evening. Um, and you're very welcome to come along and watch classes without your puppy. Yep. Ask us questions and mm -hmm. make sure we're a good place. Yeah. So if you're waiting to get your puppy, you can start puppy classes now. Yeah, Don't because wait. let's face it, it's all about training the humans, mm -hmm. isn't it? Don't wait. Okay, thanks ever so much for hanging out with us this afternoon, guys, and we Thank will see you, you later. Bye. Bye.